Hey everyone, it's Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm going to show you a method I like to use to create my own custom sampler instruments. And I don't mean quick sampler instruments where there's just one sample or slicing up a loop. I mean creating a completely original, unique, multi-sampled instrument in sampler. Now, you can do this with Auto Sampler. This was a new plugin that was added to Logic 10.5, but that only works if you have regular intervals uh, that you've sampled at. Like if you're doing every minor third, every major third, every note chromatically, every other note chromatically. For my source material, I recorded all of the 12th fret and 7th fret harmonics on my baritone guitar. So the intervals between these are not regular. And I ran these through some fuzz distortion as well as some compression. So let's just kind of zoom through these and see what they sound like. So again, these are just harmonics with some fuzz distortion. There's definitely some, some nasty tones and uh, nasty textures in there. And that might sound like a bad thing, but these things will actually add to the overall texture of the instrument, especially if you use reverb as sort of the device to sustain each of these notes like I'm going to do. So you could do this two different ways. You could uh, load these into sampler and then add your reverb or effects second or you can add the reverb and effects first and then bounce and place those effects, then cut up the samples and load them into sampler. I like the latter method because it allows me to save a plugin every time I load up this instrument and it just permanently renders the effect into the instrument. So the reverb I'm gonna use is Black Hole from Eventide. You don't have to use reverb. You can, you know, it all depends on what your source material is and what sort of sound you're going for. I'm going for sort of like a distorted pad sound, but a pad that doesn't linger on forever. I want it to have some natural decay. So that's definitely a cool sound, but I think the reverb tail is longer than the three bar duration of each one of these notes. So I recorded these right on, on the grid lines and I recorded them three bars at a time. So what I'm gonna do to make sure that the reverb has enough time to naturally decay down to nothing is I'm gonna cut these up into individual samples. So to do this, I'm gonna make sure I have bar snap selected and I'm going to use the scissors tool. And what you can do with the scissors tool is you can use the tool and then hold option and if I click here at bar four, you can see the very first sample is three bars in length. Well, by holding option, this will cut up the rest of the recording in three bar increments. So that's what that option modifier key does. Now I could just space out these regions manually, but I think a simpler way to do this would just be to drop the tempo. So right now it's at 125, let's make this like 60. And you can see each of these are on bar lines. They're still three bars apart but now there's just more space between them because I've lowered the tempo. So I'll just select the track. I'm gonna go ahead and add like a 500 millisecond fade out to each one. That's like a half second fade. That'll just keep any uh, clicks or pops uh, out of the recordings. And I'll go ahead and just add like a one or two millisecond fade in to account for any clicks or pops there as well. Okay, so now I should have enough time for that uh, reverb to naturally decay. Yeah, so we're good there. So now what I need to do is I need to bounce this in place because I want to render that effect into the samples. One thing I'm going to do, and I'll explain why in just a moment, is I'm going to duplicate the very last sample and just kind of throw it out here somewhere, somewhere further than, you know, the natural sample is supposed to go. 
Then I'll select that whole track, press Control B to bounce in place. And I wanna make sure that I do not bypass effects plugins. And um, yeah, I think we're good there. I'll hit okay. And this will bounce all of these into a new stereo audio file. Now, this audio file, uh, as I said before, has this extra note on it. I just didn't want the recording to auto trim this, you know, sooner than three bars. So that's why I did that. I just want each sample to be exactly three bars in length. So I'll do that. Now, at this point, you might think, okay, we could just drag this into Sampler and we're good to go. The problem is if you drag this down here and I go to Sampler note per zone, or zone per note rather, Sampler may or may not accurately map each of the notes. Although here it looks like it's done it correctly. So yeah, in this case, it actually worked. If for some reason the mapping doesn't work, what you can also do, and what I actually usually do, is I cut these up again, and then I drag these down, and you'll see the options are different. Now it's sampler, chromatic map, and optimized map. And what I'll typically do is use the optimized map. So with this option, it loads each sample in individually rather than just loading in one sample. So this is my preferred way to do things. And as long as Sampler is able to pick out the pitch of each note, it should automatically map those notes where they need to go. Another thing that's not required to do this, but I like to do this, is I like to rename each sample with its pitch and its octave number. This just helps if I want to reuse these samples, maybe in a different sampler instrument that isn't able to detect pitch. Now, what this has automatically done is it's automatically created some loops here. I want to turn that off. Um, some instruments, you might want a loop. If you want a sustained pad or a sustained string instrument or something like that, the loops can be very helpful. Um, you can just set the loop range here, and it'll automatically loop that area. But for this instrument, again, I don't want any loops. So what I'm going to do is click here to go to Zone View, and then I'll just make sure that all of the zones or all of the samples are selected. So I'll just press Command A to do this. Then I'll scroll over and you'll see there's an option here for loop. I'll just turn that off and now none of the samples will be looped. And at this point, I can just mute my original samples here and I should be able to go ahead and just play this on my MIDI controller. So yeah, that sounds absolutely massive. That's a really cool pad. But the problem is that when I release the notes, it's cutting off really quickly. And that's because we just need to extend the release time of the volume envelope in Sampler. So the way you do that is you just go to Synth here. And at the very bottom, you'll see two envelopes. The first envelope is paired with Amp. Amp, you can think of this as amplitude or amplifier. It's really just a volume control. So you can see that the release time is at zero. So when you release the keys, the sound is gonna immediately decay to nothing. If I drag this out a bit, you'll hear that the notes sustain for a while after I release the keys. And if I want those notes to linger even longer, I can just pull the release time out a bit more. Just keep in mind that each 1,000 milliseconds is equal to a full second. So I'm not gonna go too much further past three or four seconds. Likewise, if you wanted this to be more of a pad type instrument, you could also pull in the attack time, which will soften the attack by forcing the volume to sort of fade in when you press the keys.
Now, if you want to save this instrument, I recommend doing this in two different ways. One, you're gonna save this as a sampler patch. So I'll select Save As, and I'll give this a name. I'll call this Harmonic Fuzz Pad. What I also recommend doing if you wanna recall this even more quickly is save this as an actual library preset. So with this track selected, I'll just go down here in the library and click Save, and I'll give this a name. I'll just call it Harmonic Fuzz Pad. And then this will show up in your user patches. So if I wanna reload this instrument, at any time, I'll just create a new software instrument here. Go to user patches, load up that harmonic fuzz pad, go to sampler, and if I go to mapping, all of those samples are there. And there you go. That's how you can create your own custom multi-sampled sampler instruments in Logic Pro with just a little source material and some effects. If you want to practice this along with the tutorial, I've included a download link below that includes the original source file with the fuzz harmonics and then a second source file with the reverb bounced in place. But I encourage you to experiment with different effects and create your own unique sound design. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.